Hey everyone, Steve here, Music Maestro DJ Service. We are going to do a quick, well I don't know how quick this is going to be. Anyhow, we're going to do an unboxing and assembly of my new Rock and Roller R16. This is the one that comes with the new R-Track, super wide wheels so it doesn't sink into wet grass and things like that. And they never go flat either, which is, that's actually the reason I got this thing. Tired of flat tires. So, let's see how it goes. So this is how it comes. I just dragged it out onto this mat here so you can get a nice look at it. Uh, looks like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, take a closer inspection. Yeah, we got some nasty scratches there. Nasty scratch. I hate scratches on my stuff. I take such good care of it. I really hate it when new gear has scratches on it. Um, what are you going to do? Alright, looks like there's some wheels which shipped and they're tucked underneath it. So I'm going to get those out. I'm going to put those wheels on. There's the, the big wide wheels in the back. And so we've got these ones here. Put those down gently. Don't want to scratch it. Not sure how that was scratched here. Uh, yeah, must have been done at the factory because uh, the carton was undamaged in that spot. And here's the big, huge R Track wheels. Cool. All right, I'm going to pop those out get those put on and we'll see how it all looks. Alright, I just wanted to give you a quick look at the wheels. There's the front of the wheel. And there's the back side of the wheel. They look pretty nice. Nice wide track. Uh, the most important thing is that they're not going to go flat. I can't tell you how many times I've had a tire go flat on me. Drives me crazy. All right, and here's the front casters. Wow, that's quite impressive looking. I hope the brakes are easy to operate. Didn't care for their other ones. Um, but these ones look pretty nice. There's a better look for you there. It's got a, got a pretty big area to stomp on to lock it. Again, super wide track. It's not going to sink into soft grass or anything like that. And it will never go flat, which is what I like. All right, perfect. Let's get these on to the rock and roller. And here's just a quick shot of what you'll find taped onto the frame of the unit to mount the wheels. We've got some nuts, and lock washers to mount the casters. And we've got some of those uh, black plastic O-rings to mount the big rear wheels along with the cotter pins to lock them on. A little bit of a closer inspection here now on the Rock and Roller Multicart R16. Let's see. We've got this weld. I don't know how good the close focus is here. That's a pretty cheesy looking weld. And for those of you that were wondering where it was made, because you know how everything's made in China these days? Well, it's not made in China. It's made in the good old Malaysia. It's made, <laughs> made in Malaysia. I had you going there for a second in the good old, right? All right, so it's made in Malaysia for those of you who were wondering. Let's flip this over again. Take a better look at it. Looks okay. I haven't opened it up yet. Flip it over. It feels fairly sturdy. Uh, oh, there's another nice big scratch. So I'm going to want to touch that up so it doesn't rust. We don't want that to happen. Uh, oh, these little lock nuts look kind of cool. I've got a spring loaded, so I guess they probably don't come off by accident, which I had happen on an old cart. It wasn't a rock and roller. Um, oh, 
more paint missing and some rust already happening is they didn't put any grease on the axle at all okay what else we can, can we see here yeah same with the other the other axle uh, hmm. I'll grease it up good and there is another weld not sure if you can see that rust coming through on the edges of the weld uh, I guess the paint didn't go on there again pretty crappy looking weld I'm hoping this thing's gonna hold together uh, I guess we'll find out okay back to the wheels let's get those let's get those wheels on all right so first you want to remove these little caps on the axles I already loosened it up it was pretty tight so I just take it off that exposes the little hole there for the cotter pin Next you want to, I already slid this on, you want to slide this little unit on there which stops the wheel from rubbing against the frame. Very important. Now we're going to get some grease and we're going to grease this up as per the instructions. Alright, we put a, some of that nice axle bearing grease on there. So let's go ahead and mount the wheels. Alright, so we've got our little black washer on. Uh, and grab the wheel slider on there not bad eh, okay it's good you can see I've got to just stick the little cotter pin in there I would prefer to have a washer on this side too I don't know if there's enough room for it uh, let me see that way it would eliminate some of that wobble that we're gonna have I think there is room for it uh, I'm gonna take a closer look Maybe I'll have to pick up some washers and put them in later because I don't think I have any handy. All right, we'll do the same with the other side. All right, so we've got that wheel mounted. Cotter pin's in there. There's not much light there. Cotter pin is there. It's nice and uh, snug. It's not going to come off, but you know what? I just don't like the cotter pin rubbing against the plastic. I just took out my vernier calipers, measured it. We've got a three-quarter inch axle, so I'm going to grab a couple three quarter inch washers which if they would have just given us four of those little black guys we would have been all set so hopefully rock and roller will be paying attention to this video and they will start packing four of those little washers so I'm gonna grab a couple metal ones because look at this terrible slack in there so we're gonna put those on that'll help it a little bit it's not gonna remove the slack and the difference in size between the axle and the inner shaft of the wheel itself so it's not going to eliminate that but it will help keep it lined up better and it'll stop that cotter pin from wearing away the plastic all right so the wheels are on slack and all now we're going to move along to install the front ones all right all right that's on there not much to it just slip it through so, here we go put on the original lock washer and the original nut we'll do the same on the other side and tighten them up all right we've got those wheels mounted on there nice and snug I didn't over tighten these because I do not want to crush this tubing so let's just tighten them enough to lock the washer to flatten that lock washer and you'll be good to go now let's open this thing up and see how it works all right that locks pretty nicely let's check the other one here okay let's go over here and Step on the release cord again with my big sandals on. I know. Sandals and socks. It's a Canadian thing. That's pretty nice. A little bit of slack there. This one's much tighter here. So I guess the welds were a little bit more accurate. It's also, I think it's the higher, yeah, it's the higher handle. So that's kind of nice to have that tight for pushing or pulling purposes. Looks like it'll, uh, 
I like to push the cart. Of course, pulling is going to be pulling is going to be braced up against here, so it's always going to be stronger. Um, these little brackets, I don't know if you can see them, but anyways, those are what hold it in case you're pushing the cart, which is what I like to do. So it looks pretty cool. Swivel's nice. I'm going to open it up, check it out, I'll check it out a little bit better. I've heard that this uh, non-slip tape likes to come off. Oh yeah, you have to press it back down. I saw the airspace underneath. Um, so yeah, I guess it'll get scratched up because that's what these things do. But uh, looks pretty cool. I'm going to expand it. Let's see. Um, there we go. Let's loosen those up underneath. Should have a preset lock position, I believe. So we'll loosen these up. See how loose do they go? Do they come right off? Uh-oh, I think they do come right off. Mm. Yep, yep, they come right off. I wished that they didn't, because um, then they can fall off, which I had happen on a different cart before. That was not cool. All right, so I'm gonna open this thing up and see how it works. All right, so now that it's assembled, I flipped it up. We're gonna pull this right up and extend it to its maximum position, and there should be I don't know if you can see a little hole there, a little pin popping out when it's reached, reached its maximum. All right, let's go. There we go. There's the little pin. It's popped out maximum position. Let's lower it down. And there we have the max. That's pretty big. I think it's 52 inches going by memory, which is a little bit longer than my other cart, which was 48 inch max. Now I used to use it, or I usually use it at 36 inches and uh, only extend it when I need to for uh, larger shows. I, I used to make two trips with the 36 inch version. So it wasn't a rock and roll or different type. Anyhow, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how I can lay my stuff out on here. Uh, it does have that lock for the full position, but it does not lock for its minimum position. Now, I would like to see another hole drilled for the minimum position, so I will most likely drill the hole for the minimum position so that when I shrink this thing back, I don't know if I can do this with one hand, just flip this up. Yeah, I don't want to hurt myself, but okay, if I pinch this in and start to lower this there so I would like to see that pin uh, pop out there so we'll drill another hole down here if I can measure out and figure out exactly where that pin is and then it'll pop out here so to release it I'd have to press that in and pull it up that's kinda what I'm used to uh, if I end up using it at full position all the time, I guess it's all right. But I mean, you're either going to have to release a pin down there, which is what I think they should do, drill one more hole uh, during the manufacturing process, or you're going to have to come up here and loosen these guys every time because you're going to want to tighten it right now. Because if you don't tighten it, what happens is when you flip it up, when you flip it or pack it up in your van or whatever, uh, the thing's going to open up. It's going to slide out on you, and that could be unsafe. So make sure it's tightened up. That's good. We'll flip her back. And there you have it. The Rock and Roller R16, fully assembled. It does look like a pretty cool little cart, though, so hopefully it serves me well. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and assembly, and uh, I'll probably report back later in the comments once time has gone by and let you know how it's worked out for me. All right, you guys, take care, practice, bring music to the people. Cheers.